Okay, hello. Today we're going to talk about the mystery of silver marks. Now they must be a mystery because I get asked about silver marks more than anything else. And I know a lot of people go on the internet, they read books, they, they try to figure out, you know, what they have, what the name of their pattern is, you know, various things like that. So anyway, so it's a huge subject and there, there's a whole library of books on the subject and I can't spend the next week talking about it, but I can give you a, a few little ideas. So let's confine our discussion to American silver. It's relatively easy compared to the European silver and other silver as far as the variety of marks that there are. So, uh, let's look at a typical piece of silver. This one is a spoon in the pattern Heppelwhite. So, what you have, it's, it has the Reed and Barton symbol, which is a lion on either side of an R, and then it says Sterling, and then it has a little H. Okay, so very straightforward. So, the maker is Reed and Barton. The Sterling means that it's 92.5% pure, and the H in this case means the spoon was made heavy. The really, the really, the thing that most people wonder about the most is, you know, is my piece of silver sterling or is it silver plate? Now here's a, a silver plate fork. Now this one just says Reed and Barton. It's got nothing else on it. People say, is it sterling? It doesn't say silver plate. So anyway, the law for way over the last hundred years has been if it's sterling, it's going to be marked with the word sterling. It can be marked A1, triple plate, nickel silver, uh, silver soldered. Uh, it can be marked a million things. All it is a fancy way of saying silver plate. I had a woman come in the other week and she said, um, I bring all this silver in it's got to be sterling because it tarnishes like crazy. Well, that's not true. Silver plate tarnishes just as much as sterling. It's, as I say, it's very easy. If it's got the word sterling, it's sterling. If it does not have the word sterling, it is not sterling. Okay. A lot of people also try to figure out the name of their pattern and the maker of their pattern. That's not as easy. There's a lot of symbols for the name. In this country, we used so, so something called pseudo hallmarks. We wanted to make the things look important, and so they put crowns, they put lions on the back of the silver to make it look important. And determining the, the maker takes a book, or look at a website. Our website has a little pattern identifier that you can just click on and look at all the marks and make sure that they, you know, and find it the, the maker of your silver. Once you find the maker, then you can find the pattern by matching it up with other patterns on the website. One other thing that, you know, since I'm trying to answer a lot of the questions I get on a daily basis is other writing on the back. Now this this one says King Brothers and I can't tell you how many times people have called me and said okay I have King Brothers silver or a, a thousand other names that appear on the back of silver. So what you've got is you've got a symbol with a lion, you've got the sterling, you have an H for heavy, and then you have, in this case, King Brothers. And so people think they have King Brothers silver. That is the retailer. So early this century, people wanted you to buy your silver again at the small store that you bought it from, 
And so King Brothers, in this case, you know, put their name on the back of it, um, along with this be bewildering little symbol. And so uh, they wanted you go, to go back to King Brothers. Anyway, it does take some work. If all else fails and you can't figure it out, I've had people call me and say, I've been up all night, I've been working, trying to figure this out. Well, we're happy to answer questions. We're happy to guide you through the process. Just call us or email us the, the um, symbols and we'll tell you your pattern. Thank you.